those doing chicken eggs, uh, these chicken egg trays are also available as chicken egg is much larger. Hello my fellow quail lovers, uh, this is Ian here from Down Under in Melbourne, Australia. Um, I just want to show you my latest little thing that I've put together, which might, which I think it's uh, quite handy. Everybody who is planning to incubate their own eggs, there is a period of collecting the eggs um, prior to incubating. For example, if you got, let's say, six laying hens, you'd be collecting approximately, if they're doing the job, six eggs a day. So six, twelve, and so forth. Um, and they'll need to be turned um, regularly, maybe at least once or twice a day. So as you can see that during collection of the eggs, there needs to be a period of time, whether it be one day, two day, three day, four day, or a week. Usually under 10 days is when uh, eggs uh, start to lose their fertility, uh, that's what they reckon. Uh, so with that um, you need something that can turn your eggs either you do it manually or you have a kit like this Which you just put your eggs on it and forget about it and you just keep turning it for you until you're ready to incubate um, Having said that so this is actually <coughs> Outside of the incubation time um, this kit uh, can be used and having said that you can even use it during your incubation as well if you built your own um, polystyrene box or some sort of a thermal box which you can incubate from you can use the same system um, during incubation under 37.5 degrees celsius um, and to serve its purpose of turning the eggs uh, without having to manually turn it so this this is very useful because i've got an incubator and when i looked at it i'm like okay i'm collecting eggs for uh, for seven days, which I, I chose seven days as 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 a, uh, as, a as a as a figure as a you know um, to collect for for one week and then incubate, um, and every day of oh, trying to turn the eggs and especially when you got forty over eggs, it's just getting too much, um, and yeah, I like automation. I like to make things easy, and uh, and I decided that hey, if my incubator can turn the eggs every two hours, why can't I have something to be able to do it outside the of the incubator. So I actually spoke to a to a manufacturer in in China, and we managed to uh, get a hold of these um, the actual trays. But I said, do you have anything that can give us the two hour mark, the the actual program to turn the um the eggs at two hours to turn them every two hours turn the eggs, uh, and they said no. It's either you buy the whole kit, and I wasn't going to fork out the money to buy another incubator just to be able to turn the eggs um, outside of the incub prior to the incubation. So, uh, so I said, all right, that's fine. Let me buy your um, egg turner kit, which is um, there's no intelligence in it. It's just a a a, a egg turner system uh, with a motor and connections that's it there's no microprocessor there's nothing it's just a dead mechanical thing you put in power to the motor and the motor continuously turn at a set rpm so if you put in power your egg tray will be turning all day which will serve the purpose but using power and it's and it's not good for the life of the motor then it wouldn't have a clue how long it's going to last been running 24 hours um for seven days in my case because i choose to um to collect for seven days or well, seven to ten days so i ended up uh sourcing and fi finding a supplier and giving them the parameters that i need for my incubator uh, for, so not for my incubator for my egg turner and this is the solution we came up with so hopefully you enjoyed the video um feel free to comment uh and any any ideas let us know and hopefully i can make this kit available worldwide soon you might ask why don't I use the incubator as the egg turner uh, because it has the two hour two hourly egg turning feature the reason I don't use it is because as soon as you plug in your incubator turn it on the fan starts going the heat starts going so you've got heat and you've got fan which is wasting power and the second thing is because I I run my hatching program throughout the year so it's a collecting incubating brooder box into the grow pen so that cycles goes from January to December and my egg collecting starts at the end of my incubation cycle so you can't use it because it's been used for the eggs to hatch. This is where a standalone egg turner works perfectly. Okay, I've got my phone on a bit of a 
on the shelf there, which is getting a good angle. This is my 12 volt power source to my little beautiful little smart little timer. Um, let's see, here we go. I'm powering it on. Hopefully, you can see the LCD on here. There we go. As you can see, six, five, four, three, and the egg's turning. Two, one, boom. And it counts down to 3,600 seconds. If I unplug it, let's do it again. Here we go. Six, five, four, and the eggs is moving. Let's try that again so you can actually see the egg moving. So it's tilting to the left hand side now. So basically, um, every one hour, the the egg turner will turn. Uh, basically, the seconds that you set for the power to be on, depending on the, on the IPM of the motor type, depending on the winding of the motors at, at 12 volt or, or whatever. Um, and I'll show you how to set Okay, this. here's another, another shot of it. Um, I've actually reset my, my timer to basically power on for six seconds, because six seconds gives um, a good a good turn, a good angle of the eggs. Two, one, zero, and I've set it for 10 seconds meaning 10 second power off so that means every 10 second she's going to do um every every yeah resting for 10 seconds of so six five four the egg is turning if you can see and then rests for 10 seconds so every cycle it rests for 10 seconds that's what i was trying to say and then it's going to power on for six seconds so this will keep your eggs turning throughout the day without you having to physically be there to turn, and which is important for a good successful hatch because you don't want the eggs to be uh, stagnant in one position so that the yolk will be resting on one position for hours and hours and hours on end. So this will make sure that the yolk is basically moving and floating um, within the eggs without sticking uh, to any sides for a period of time. So let's set it back to my original setting. Six seconds is correct, uh, and let's go to 3600 seconds which is every one hour um, most incubators with the egg turner will be turned every two hours which is 7200 seconds but i just like to do it one hour you can do it for half an hour every half an hour if you wish and this the last setting here i'm just trying to explain to you is how many cycles that you want it to do before turning off we just leave it at zero because we want to do it continuously um yeah without stopping here we go. Four, three, two, one. There you go. Six, five. It's powering on. Powering on, and it's turning the eggs, as you can see. And it's 3,600 seconds, which is one hour. So I'm going to let you, I'm going to zoom in um, on the egg turner. Let's see if I can zoom in. Here we go. Looking at the eggs. And I'm going to unplug this and plug it in for you. Use all to see. There we go. Can you see the eggs tilting? The eggs are actually tilting. Three, two, one, and then this is the rest time where power off. So that's how it works. Um, I'm going to try to make this kit available if anybody is interested. Um, we do business uh, a lot. We import a lot from China. So this kit being, don't be afraid that it's going to be. It's a huge parcel. It's not. Um, the egg. What do you call it? The egg um, tray, the automatic egg tray turner, the whole yellow plastic, it actually breaks down um, quite easily. Out of focus. There you go. It actually breaks down. Uh, it all basically clips in. Pull it apart and it becomes flat, pretty much the size of the length, the longest part of the length of the egg tray. And this, of course, everything puts, um, get, gets flat pack with this little beautiful circuit. Um, which I actually got a factory to make for us with the uh, correct uh, program parameters which we need and we can basically teach you um, how to DIY and connect it. It's using a 12 volt source, 12 volts probably best, um, less dangerous than, well, it's quite safe versus 240 or 120 volts for those, 110 volts for those in the US and the likes of that. Uh, and with DC 12 volts, it's all the same everywhere you go. So there's no problems with motors running at 110 um, volts or motors running at AC 220, 240, which, yeah. And another feature of this is you can actually turn the LCD off or turn the LCD back on um, if you, 
for example, once you've set it, uh, and we can make available these cases as well. So once you finish with it, um, yeah, you can actually turn the LCD off so it doesn't use light, it uh, doesn't use power to light the digits. Boom, there you go. And there's no light. Um, and the program is still running. Once in the she's in the encased uh, box, enclosed in the box, um, you can basically have it anywhere. I, like, I usually I just tape it there, which I've just uh, torn off just to show you what's inside and how it all works. So I'll just leave it there or leave it loose, whatever. At least the box keeps it nice and safe um, and protected. And with that, of course, you've got your any old 12 volt DC adapter. You can run it off your car battery as well, run it off any batteries because it doesn't use a lot of power. I mean, <laughs> the motor's turning on for six seconds. Um, every hour, every two hours, or even every half an hour, it's not gonna use a lot of power, okay? So you can even have a solar, a battery with a solar panel if you, you know, like to go um, down that path. But um, yeah, this tray can hold, there's 22, 22 times one, two, three, four, five, six, is 100 plus, I think 140, um, something like that maybe uh, coral eggs so I've, I've collected my eggs this this way I've got two cages um, as you can see I've got a, a circle and I've got a two straight lines um, just to differentiate these this is from one of my cage which has six hens and one male so this is another cage um, with six hens and one male those the males are not brothers so they're not related um, so that uh, I can differentiate and when I pick my eggs for example, this is Can you see Oops, sorry there? That's zero cage from from the cage from the circle cage day one So these are all the day one eggs that I pick see from the circle cage From one of my cages and as you go along here, that's still day one um, Let's try here Day two That's number two there Um then this is day, still number two. Then you come down to here, that's day four. So day three was only a few. Um, I only picked my biggest eggs uh, I, with having choice uh, with 12 hens laying every day. I tend to uh, leave or um, leave the smaller eggs for incubation and use the biggest eggs. Um, this is from the other cage, the two lines, day one, day two, and so forth. That's a bit dark. Um, there you go. Day four. Um, as you can see, that this cage has more eggs than this because at the moment I've got one hen um, getting picked on, so it's a bit upset. So that cage, the dynamics of that cage is a bit topsy turvy at the moment. So yeah, a bit uneasy. So less eggs, but generally, yeah. The reason why I um, label my eggs. Um, to differentiate between the two males, the two fathers, as to say, um, from the two cages, um, and also the days. One means day one of collecting, day two, day three, day four, etc. is so that when come, uh, t time comes for incubation, at the end of the hatch, um, or I can even see that uh, during the third day or fourth day when candling, which is not fertile. At least it gives me an indication of which cage it came from and also uh, which day I actually picked the eggs. For example, if that day there was some sort of fighting going on or, or, or something was going on in the cage, um, I make note of it. And if more, three or four of them are not fertile, that means maybe the, 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 the roo, the male, uh, wasn't um, doing his job for the day. Or especially at the end of the hatch, those who died in the shell, fully developed, I can, have, I can I can see which cage and which day I, I actually um, collected it from. Um, and also those eggs which are unfertile are also good to check. So it sort of gives you a sort of a record, um, a bit of a history on the egg, uh, why and when. Um, yeah. And also for those who are collecting, let's say, 10 days of collection, 11 days, at least you can see uh, your day one eggs, for example, if you collected for 10 days, if day one eggs, if majority of it was not fertile, that means you can go, hmm, okay, I've collecting it for day 10, for 10 days, and my day one eggs, I'm getting a lot of unfertile eggs, that could be telling you that, hey, your first uh, 10 days is too long, it's losing, your day one eggs is losing fertility, then you might go, okay, that's 
start collecting from seven days or eight days or you might even try let's collect for 12 days um, and if all the eggs are fertile then you know that hey my eggs um, from my chick from my hens for 12 days at the, at the at the temperature i store them beautiful they're fertile at least that gives you an indication of um, what's happening yeah hope you've enjoyed that and hopefully um uh, you guys like the idea and if you do like I said um, we can ship these from our warehouse in China and, and ship worldwide and the freight shouldn't be ridiculous I will put together some prices and those who are interested can pretty much um, get in touch uh, and leave a message and we can I can put the cost to the US to Europe to the UK etc just gonna give you a quick uh, show a walkthrough on how this egg tray um, turner gets put together or basically it gets shipped loose every tray is loosely shipped you have to assemble it and by assembling it's just as easy as this they come now with one hand I'm trying to pop okay I popped one through anyway can you see that it's all plastic it's very um, very very flexible trying to focus and to put it together, you basically just go clip, and she's clipped in. See the back? Yep, just a pressure fit on the lugs. And every single lug, you've got to pop it through. See? So that bottom comes loose. This part comes loose. The egg tray is bolted to the bottom um, plate, which is fine. Plastic tray, plastic plate. And on this side, the same story. Every single lug, you have to push it through and lock it in place. And that's it. And of course, there's a supporting beam underneath, just out of plastic as well. Um, this thing will last you forever unless you step on it or your dog eats it so yeah and the motor there's no load what the motor does is i can show you um i can unplug this with this is a better view see how when the motor turns when the motor turns i'm, gonna, I'm actually unplugging it and plugging it back in see that the motor turns uh, which is on an offset sort of a cam and then the whole tray system turns back it out see that that's it now you can get a good view i'm plugging the connection plugging it back in some of you are probably thinking why isn't that idiot just turn the power off at the wall instead of trying to fiddle around with the connections um you can't do that because the, the dc transformer has residual power after you turn it off so my um, circuit, the timer circuit board, still gets power from the 12 volt. So that doesn't turn it off completely. That means you can reset the actual, um, what do you call it, the, the counter, the program. So yeah, I guess you guys got a pretty much fair idea how it all works. Yeah, okay.